Hello everyone and welcome back to my Transgalactic Trek in Elite Dangerous. In my special episode at the center of the galaxy, I mentioned that there was a region of space around uh, 15 to 20,000 light years into the galaxy where there were a lot of great spots to discover things, lots of B-type, O-type stars, neutron stars and that sort of thing. And so in this episode I hope to highlight that on my way back into civilized space and so uh, here I'll uh, give you a look. I'm at 20,000 uh, light years from uh, from core systems and about 6,000 light years away from the galactic center. And I'll show you the galactic map in a sec. This is what the center of the galaxy basically looks like, right? Still the Milky Way, lots of dust, and it's obscuring the fact that there's actually a lot more stars there than, uh, than are visible like this. But if I turn around, you will note that there is a very distinct border where the dust ends and we get a lot of these blue stars. Here are all the B-type and O-type stars. And this is pointing in the direction back to Sol System and the rest of space. And of course there are other arms and so you see another dust belt there where we have another arm of the galaxy. But there's a obvious cluster of very bright stars and there is the next system that I'm going to be heading to. So let me show you what this looks like on the galaxy map. So you can sort of still see the haze of the center of the galaxy, right? The center of the galaxy has this haze around it and then there are other arms with some dust. And here at 20,000 light years I'm so heading in a sideways direction to, uh, you see I've only got selected B-type, O-type, Carbon, Wolf Rayet, and White Dwarf, white dwarf Stars, and of course non sequence Stars, which will be our Neutron Stars and Black Holes. And uh, over here on this side, I don't have too many of them, but I'm heading into a, the first of many, many clusters where we do have quite a lot of these B-type and O-types. And then if I continue in this direction towards the center of, uh, not the center of, but uh, the back to where I can sell all the products of my es exploration, you can see lots and lots along this road. Plenty of stuff uh, if, you're li if you like uh, really bright stars, of course, there are plenty of A-type stars, these are good for finding, and G-type stars, all good for finding uh, terraformable worlds which are very valuable and if we just want to see O-type stars there aren't too many here yet but as we continue you can see a few get spotted and I'll probably be making my way to them as waypoints along my trip but more and more as we get further in so here we can see that there are little clusters and then they peter out sometimes and then there are more clusters. What I'm really interested in, so this is a less dense region, but right back here there's a huge dense region. But what I'm really interested in are these sorts of things. Oops. This is a non-sequence star and what is that? That's a neutron star. And so right here uh, we're going to get some of the neutron stars and so if you're looking for your black holes and neutron stars, you're probably going to find them around the 15,000 light year mark or around there. Of course these are very valuable for, uh, I mean, not as much as the terraformable worlds or Earth-like planets, but still good finds. Try to see if we can uh, find a black hole. Uh, most of, mostly you'll find a lot of neutron stars. So anyway, I will uh, continue this trip in this episode and I'll show you what I can find. Here's a nice little cluster of them. Neutron. Okay, so I'll try and cover as much of this little region as possible. And again, if we uh, turn back on the rest of the stars, you can see there's, there's plenty of these bright stars to look at. And of course, where there are bright stars, there are also plenty of stars that have potentially habitable planets. Lots and lots. Okay, but the site I wanted to greet you with is this one. And this is a stark contrast to what we saw 
at the center of the galaxy. There's quite a field of stars here. And so I'll be making my way through this. Now this here is the first B-type star I've seen since I was at the center of the galaxy. The region within 6,000 light years of Sagittarius A doesn't really have many large stars like this. This is the first one I've seen since I made the rest of the way in. And I don't think, was there anything interesting around it? The trouble with big stars, of course, is you're not going to get many terraformable planets around it. Yeah, you get a lot of these uh, T-Tori stars, but not the kind of worlds that we are mostly interested in. But so I generally plot between B-type stars, but then hit a lot of F-types, G-types along the way, and those generally have the type of planets that uh, I'd be interested in. Now, if you weren't impressed by how much of a distinct border there is between one region and, and another, here you can see, thanks to the fact that the B-type star is obscuring the light from some of the other stars, the very clear line, delineating line between the region of the center of the galaxy where there aren't too many bright stars but a whole lot of stars, the actual star count is huge, and where we're headed, which is back home. So I'm heading right now to this neutron star, out from that B-type star you just saw. And on the very first jump, I've encountered this F-type, which is a nifty looking one. And this F-type actually has some interesting planets around it. Uh, we can see this one, oh, that, that looks quite quite suggestive. Uh, this is 3.71 astronomical units out, so that's probably going to be too cold. But we can't really see how many astronomical units these two are from the F-type because they're binary and it only shows how they orbit each other. But maybe that one, and maybe that one, it looks like a Earth-Mars pair from here, frankly. Uh, would give us some interesting possibilities. So let me head towards that. Looks like it's still pretty far out. That's at least two astronomical units. It's probably pretty cold. Okay, let's see what's up with this planet. And its companion. Okay. And how about its companion as well? We can take a closer look. Well, that would be quite a night sky for this planet. Okay, let's see whether it's got what we are looking for. Yep, planet is a candidate for terraforming, so is its companion. I'm not going to do the rest of these, I've got a long trip ahead of me. So let's continue on from here. Whoa, that's not good. Yeah, that's a sort of silly mistake I've uh, made in order to get my my ship down to these numbers in health. Notice the cargo hatch at 36%, life support at 47%. Yeah, there's uh, dangerous times for me, honestly. Okay, everyone, so we're about to jump into the neutron star system. And so throttle is up, and here we go. Friendship. And, uh, well, it's around here somewhere. 
Now, just like black holes, neutron stars do produce the wandering star effect sometimes. There it is. They're basically really tiny dots, even if you get way too close to them, so don't try to get close to them to see if you can see anything more than that. It's just going to be a mess. And I can tell you that from personal experience. Oh, there's something else in this system. So as expected, this neutron star hasn't been discovered by anybody else. Most of the stuff out here hasn't been discovered by anybody else. It's got a companion star. Uh, let's see if it's in decent range, but there's nothing else around, so I'm probably not going to waste too much time. I think I can ping it from out here. Let's see how close I need to be to ping it. But yeah, there's lots of neutron stars, and most of them have been undiscovered. They're very lucrative, and so if you want to make your way out, you don't have to go all the way to uh, here, which is 19.7 thousand light years. You can even spot some fresh ones closer in. And again, we still have the definite border between the field of blue stars here and then the dusty area in the center there. Okay, looks like we can ping this G-type star at a range of 9,000 light seconds. I'll just slow down a little bit here. Could do some fuel scooping at it, but I think we have plenty to continue on with. Okay, so that's done, and let's look at the map and see where our next destination will be. Okay, so uh, we are starting out here now, and you can see we've made about 300 light years since I started the episode, and I've only got O types, carbon, wolf rayet, and wife dwarfs selected. The B types are, of course, quite numerous, as you can see just in this region, but uh, there is a neutron star there, there's a, I think that's another neutron star, and there's an O-type star. Uh, let's say I'll meet you at the O-type star. I'll try and hit those two uh, neutron stars along the way. And we'll just go straight down along this line. Yeah, so I'll plot for this neutron star and then we'll continue heading down like this. Okay, we are now about to jump into the O-type star system. I actually passed it by another O-type star along the way that was about 90 light years off of my path. But I decided to pass on that because, well, I was hitting two neutron stars. I got two neutron stars as planned, and I've got this one ahead of me. There are plenty of stars out here to look at, and here we'll go for for this O-type. All right, so here we go jumping. And you'll notice we do have a wandering star there. I think that is just being distorted by the O-type and its uh, incredible mass. I don't think there's another neutron star black hole around. Oop, and there it is, an O-type with a companion nearby, too. Three new astronomical objects, not too much in this system. Okay, there we go. And there's a B-type right there. Very convenient, but let's see what is in the system. Okay, wow, so O-type, B-type, B-type, B-type. Wow, and as you can see, still unexplored. So, yep, plenty of stuff out here to get. Uh, I think there was another B-type relatively close in. I don't know if I'm going to hit that one. I generally don't venture out just for a star. 
Oh, uh, let's fuel scoop a bit. Um, I'd rather fuel scoop around the O type. Fuel scoop disengaged. Look at that field of stars. We can still see the border. So I'm not too sure what the exact configuration of this star field is. You can see the border right there. So I really wonder what the shape of this huge... Okay, well there's the other star. Let's just park it here. Okay, that'll do it for me here. Let's see if I can find a black hole. Well, there are sure a lot of neutron stars. Actually, that distortion that we had seen earlier is probably from this neutron star just 41 light years away from where we are right now. But, you know, there's a neutron star here. And yeah, there's one here. Oh, a uh, bunch of them here, I think. Yeah. Neutron, neutron, neutron. Just trying to find a black hole here. These are all neutron stars here. You'd figure that there'd be some black hole somewhere around. Can't be that everything collapses into a neutron star. Right? Oh, there's two of them here. Wow, lots of neutron stars. Well, if you're a fan of neutron stars, you can definitely find them. There's way too many for me to pick up. There we go. Black hole, 372 light years away. I'll plot for that, and I'll see you there. And so, finally, we have in front of us the system that contains the black hole. And we are now only 18,500 light years away from home, uh, so about uh, 7,500 light years from the galactic core. And what used to be a very, very distinct border, you'll notice now there are blue stars on the opposite side of the border. We used to have a very hard line here. Now some of the blue stars are on the opposite side because we've traversed a thousand light years and they are now behind us. So there is no longer quite the same distinct line that we had previously, but still a very clear concentration, much higher density on this side. And so we continue on, and let's see about this black hole. Frameship drive charging. Okay, well once again we do not see a star right in front of us. Should be obvious. And somewhere around here, very close in fact, there it is. That's the black hole. Doesn't look like much, but it'll be a little bit more obvious if I move around a bit after I get my ping here. Alright, so uh, let's point away a bit. And now you can see stars shifting around just like they did with the galactic core. You can see that st there's sort of a sphere of stars moving in a particular direction. I'm gonna get some distance away so that I, you know, don't act. Oh, there's a B type star. Let's ping that. Hold on. I gotta do my discovery scanner. Okay, and let's. Let's head in this direction a bit and then we'll turn around and face the black hole again. Okay, now I'm gonna select the black hole. And there you go, you can see the stars moving to the side there very clearly and if you pay attention you'll be able to see that sort of sphere of stars whose light is getting distorted on the event horizon and then there's still the, these wandering stars I'm not entirely sure how that works but 
Yeah, we still get these. But anyway, that's what Black Hole looks like in Elite Dangerous when it's small, when it's not at the galactic center and it's a huge, huge million star mass thing. Okay, but with that, I'm. let me see if I should continue exploring this system. But I'll probably leave it there unless we've got a likely Earth-like planet around here somewhere, which is doubtful with such a big star in the black hole involved. So there's the black hole, and as expected, nobody's discovered it yet. It's an A-class star, not a B. My mistake. Yeah, it doesn't look like there are any Earth-likes. I don't know, that's... Let's see... That's an interesting ring planet right there, but I think that's just going to be ice anyway. Okay, so I'll leave it here for this episode. I just wanted to show you the area of space that I sort of consider to be the explorer's playground because there's still a lot to discover out here. And if you want to make your credits being an explorer, this is sort of the place to be. But uh, with that, I'm going to continue on my, my trip back home and um, probably about a, more than a quarter of the way back and probably the next episode of Elite Dangerous Outpost will be getting to the last thousand light years or so. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.